Hello, sir. Wait. Hey! Ah! Hello again. Welcome to Poopville. A few weeks ago, the wonderful people over at Paradox Interactive gave me access to an early build of City Skylines 2. And then, they put me on a crane. We'll talk about that later. In City Skylines 2, you build cities, construct townships, move people around with mass transit networks, and try your absolute hardest to not murder hundreds of thousands of people with a tsunami of poo. Since this is an early pre-release of the game, only a select few people can actually play it, which gave me a devilish idea. Without too much effort, I can probably make the largest city the game has ever seen. And then, I can commit unspeakable atrocities upon my glorious creation. So, let us begin. Wanting to start things off properly, I began the game with tutorials. Move with these keys, tilt the camera with these keys, build roads like this. Mmm. Zoning. And before I knew it, I had built the beginning of a small town, burgeoning with life, ready to take on the future, inhabited by the brightest of a new generation. A town of bustling opportunities, limitless growth. Uh, uh, yeah. Unlike the first game, I had no limit on the amount of terraforming I could do, which meant I could do things like this. For the city's road network, I had conceived an incredible solution to traffic. Triangles. This amazing technology makes every single intersection in the city six ways. You might think this is very stupid, and it is, but what's even stupider is this type of intersection actually exists in real life. And where else would it exist than beautiful, sunny Los Angeles? The real intersection is even worse than these ones though, because it doesn't have any traffic lights. Just six stop signs. What the fuck? With traffic 100% solved, forever, I could move on to more important things. Like schools, police stations, water infrastructure, fire stations, and most importantly, somewhere to put all the poo. How about, uh... Here. Once the poo had been successfully routed into the poo cano, it was only a matter of time until it filled. Well, a matter of very long time. I spent about another hour on the city, and by then it had filled to about here. Not very high. And that meant it was... <clears throat> time to drink. Placing a water pump inside the poo cano resulted in fresh poo being delivered directly to people's taps, which caused the entire city to either pack up and leave, or die. Well, Poopville was no more. And with that, we move on to attempt two. Gentlemen, welcome to Peniston. This city went a little better than Poopville. A little. This time, I spent a bit longer learning the basic principles of the game and examined things that had been changed from City Skylines 1. Things like much larger, really nice looking service buildings, like this coal plant, ooh, or this landfill, Mmm. I checked out the new zoning, pedestrian-only streets, the grid tool, and of course, radio announcements telling you what's going on in the city. The commercial district is booming. More radio announcements. So a housing shortage is bad for the people trying to move here, right? And my personal favorite. There's a widespread concern over fears that an insidious underground criminal organization has seized control of the area. Recent crime stats confirm that the crime wave has certainly gripped our region. And it's showing no signs of letting up. I don't like the sound of that, Glenda. We'll be back after this. Oh, 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 All of this was great. So, I, uh, flattened a bit of land and got to work on the next area. I did a bit of bus stuff, zoned a bunch of housing, built these terrible, awful roads connecting everything, and then people started drinking poo again. Fucking goddamn shit. Attempt three. Before attempt three began, I had a few things to do. Namely, fly all the way to Germany, hang out for a few days, and then get hoisted 50 meters into the air by a crane. Now that we're in position, it was time to begin our fabulous new city. When naming this new city, I tried to think of a name that inspired greatness. A name that made me think, mm. Gentlemen, behold, the grand city of 
This time, I wasn't going to keep messing around. This time, I would research the ins and outs of city building, and I would construct a wonderful, perfect, flawless utopian city. So first things first, I did some research. And with that research completed, here are my findings. So, we want to build the largest possible city. A city that has an extremely high population, all buying products, driving their car, and most importantly, pooping out their butt. Well, to get to that point, our new city of Um couldn't just be a huge grid with nothing but apartment buildings. Believe me, I tried. No one moved in. This city needed to be attractive. People had to actually want to move in. And that substantially complicates things. So, why would a citizen want to move here? Well, maybe they've got a good job, or the amenities are nice, the shops sell cool stuff, the city services are reliable, it's safe, there are dudes that be selling that good zaza, plenty of crack, a nice, pleasant location to gamble away my kids' college fund, hookers on every street corner. The reasons one might want to live in a city are truly endless, so we have to try to accommodate as many as possible. First and foremost, they need somewhere to live. So let's build some roads, zone them for low-density residential, and wait. Our first citizen, the Pooh Man. If I wanted the Pooh Man to actually stay in this city, I needed to build a few service buildings. A groundwater pump for pumping groundwater, a windmill for milling wind, an industrial sector for people to work at, and then I had to decide on a place to put the poo. Hmm. 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 Yeah, I'll put it here. Once that was all done, I zoned a few more things, and then just sort of sat back and watched my creation do its magic. I even found... A dog. Bar. Bar. And there we go. Our first milestone. Ooh. This milestone unlocked a few new service buildings. I placed down a medical clinic, a cemetery, an elementary school, a landfill. The city of Mmm was definitely making me go... Mmm. With the city now growing quite quickly, came even more unlocked. Roundabouts, fire stations, police stations, higher density housing, specialized industry, and before I knew it, mm, had reached 1,000 population. End. Nighttime. Nighttime in this game looks quite nice. Now, the build I was playing on was quite an early one, which meant it came with a few bugs here and there. My favorite of which being gas stations with, uh, rather powerful lights. So, what next? Well, now the city had reached a thousand population, I had to do something truly awful. I had to start thinking. You see, in the first game, all big cities had one common struggle. Traffic. If I wanted the city to be truly huge, I had to get on top of traffic before it became an issue. So of course, I did some more research. <laughs> Holy shit! Roads. Roads on the surface may seem simple enough. Get them wrong, and disaster will follow. So, how do you not get them wrong? Well, by following a few basic principles of road networks. First being, roadway hierarchy. You probably already have a vague idea of what this means. Obviously, a highway has a pretty different purpose than the road that goes to your house. The hierarchy goes like this. Highways, then arterial roads, then collectors, and then local roads. They don't necessarily need different numbers of lanes or higher speed or really anything distinguishing them. The distinction is more about where they are in the network than what they actually look like. Each step down the hierarchy trades off mobility, or how fast you can get from point A to B, with access, or how many things you can put on that road. Local roads have the highest access, but lowest mobility, while highways have the highest mobility, with the lowest access. Speaking of highways, uh, hey, there's a highway right there. So, back to the city of We can see that these basic road principles have already been used. This road here is an arterial road. We've got some collectory looking dudes off to the side here, and all our houses are placed nicely along local roads. Next up, another neighborhood. An arterial road up here, and... Wonderful. As our city grew larger, we unlocked even more stuff. This stuff is quite important, since we need to keep our citizens happy, so more move in. In order to keep our citizens happy, I had devised a devious plan. Fuck that. With the city sufficiently, uh, lathered in parks, I could add more stuff. An industrial area here, some mixed-use developments over here, a college here, an experimental pedestrian on the street with shops over here, and before I knew it, 5,000 population. At this point in the game, issues start cropping up. 
like our cash flow is still negative, or there's a little bit of traffic, or there's a giant forest fire bearing down on the city. Yeah, I'm sure all that's fine. We're gonna take the noble path and completely ignore it. You see, in city skylines, road design and layout will only get you so far in fighting traffic. The best way to stop jams is for there to be no cars there in the first place. Gentlemen, it was time to busy ourselves with public transit. At our small scale, we only really have the capacity to add buses. So we'll add some buses. I remember first playing City Skylines 1 and spamming the shit out of buses absolutely everywhere. Doing this resulted in bus lines that look something like this. Now yes, this line does in fact service a lot of people, but if you live here and want to go here, instead of the bus going straight there, it goes here, then around here, and then stops here, and finally arrives here. This system is dumb. It's far better to have a bus that just goes from one point to another in the city, and then stops in between. With that said, here's my first bus route. It takes people from the apartments to the industrial area, and back. Simple. Now of course, the whole point of doing this is to allow people to get around without using their car. The vast majority of people, when given the choice between a bus and a car, all else equal, will almost always choose a car. This is great if you want your city to look like this, but I don't. So we need to make the bus a viable alternative. We can do this with bus lanes to prioritize bus traffic, or by not providing parking near the destination so they can't drive there. What's more important, however, is that the public transit system has layers to it. Public transit isn't just buses. It's also trams, metro, ferries, trains, and even aircraft. All these systems should mesh together to provide a viable alternative to just getting in your car and driving to your destination. The end result? Well, hopefully, not this. With the beginnings of our public transit network laid out, came rezoning. If I wanted this city to be the largest the game had ever seen, these single-family homes were no good. In their place, I zoned for mixed use, which are just apartment blocks with shops on the bottom. Instead of housing 4 or 5 people, mixed use developments can house 60 to 80. Of course, I couldn't rezone everything at once, so I just did it gradually. Bulldozing grandma's house, only every so often. With more population, once again, came more unlocks. This time, we'd unlocked the office space. Why work in a dangerous, hazardous manufacturing job when you can just sit on a computer and slap a keyboard for eight hours a day? Hey, wait a minute. Offices have a few advantages over industry. The important one being, they don't produce pollution. This means that we can place them wherever we want. They also employ a higher proportion of educated workers. This is good when your city has a high level of education. Mine doesn't, but it's nice to think that maybe someday, it will. In the meantime though, the citizens needed to be put back to work. Ah oh, shit. In particular, we needed more industry. Perhaps like this chemical plant building thing, which looks really cool and want to drink whatever funny liquid it produces. Mmm. Mmm. In that time I spent doing, uh, whatever it was that I was doing, the city had managed to pass the 15,000 population milestone. Nice. Oh yeah, and I was, uh, still on the crane. Guys, it's been a long time, guys, can you please let me down, please, guys. Everything in M mm was going perfectly. The commercial district was- The commercial district is booming. As the Industry was on Industry the rise. Industry in the region is on the rise, mm. and when a housing shortage was driving up prices a in the area. Housing shortage is driving up prices in the area. Oh my God! Yes, That's I get it. Do these radio announcers ever shut the fuck up? No, Martin. We don't shut up. What? Martin. Time is running out. The citizens demanded Martin. The citizens want poo. 
Martin, what? the Pocano is calling. Oh, no, no, no. Why are you saying this? The no, this isn't right. Stop, is please. Stop. Stop. Martin. Stop, please. Martin. Please stop. Go away. Martin. What are you talking about? I like this. Please. Please. What are you doing? Please. 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 I don't want to fight with Pooh. So, no. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Uh. Well, uh. I hit this new milestone. Yippee! Build this bridge thing. Yeah. Martin. Mm. Okay, well, uh, maybe we should try a port. You know, because it's got, like, the funny. You know, the funny. You know, the, the funny, the funny water vehicle. You know, you know, the funny. Uh. So I made a port. Now the city has shipping access. Hooray! Okay, how about a train yard and some trains? Alrighty, bam! Trains. A stop over here, a stop over here, some tunnels connecting them all, this cool train bridge thing. Nice. How about a metro? Metro stations, tunnels, metro lines. The attractiveness of mm, was truly off the charts. And in the next couple of hours of playing, the population ballooned from 15,000 to 50,000 people. This, once again, unlocked a swath of new high density buildings. So to cram even more people into my more and more limited space, I zoned a bunch of high rises. Mm, was well on its way to city glory. But this huge influx did in fact cause a few issues. Namely, traffic. With so many people moving in all at once, car traffic coming into the city was truly huge. So to combat this, I came up with a genius idea. A wonderful, pleasant, beautiful urban highway. Currently, there's only one access point into the city, but with our wonderful new urban highway and this cool bridge, there was now two. Okay, highways are cool and all that, but what's the best way to merge a highway with another road? Gentlemen, it's time to dive into the wonderful world of <laughs> interchanges. So, you're an urban planner, and you've got a problem. You've got this big road going this way, and another big road going this way. How do you join them together? Well, with an interchange. There are several to choose from, and they all serve slightly different purposes. Trumpet interchange, three-way directional interchange, single point urban interchange, cloverleaf, partial cloverleaf, diverging diamond, and everyone's favorite concrete abomination, the stack interchange. Some of these interchanges are meant for moving traffic from one highway to another, like the stack interchange, while others are made for taking traffic off the highway and putting it onto a more accessible road. This is what we want for our new highway, so for this job I chose the diamond interchange. Well, a pretty basic and honestly shit version of one, but a diamond interchange nonetheless. I repeated this basic shit design down the length of our wonderful stretch of road and ended up with this. Once that was done, it was time to build a cool bridge all the way back to the mainland and connect it up to the highway down there. This requires another interchange. Hooray! For this job, we're using a three-way directional interchange. As the title says, it's three ways, directional, and an interchange. Yeah. Anyway, with that place down, this wonderful new section of highway is open for business. And you know what that means? More expansion. More expansion, of course, meaning huge influxes of new people. In just a few hours, the city managed to go from 50,000 population all the way up to 90,000. Huge swaths of new people making their way into the city via our new highway proved very quickly that the interchanges I had designed were in fact very bad, and I should feel bad about it. Fucking idiot, fucking stupid dumbass. Not to worry though, because one of my intercity trains I had the foresight of building was doing some serious heavy lifting. A couple of them were even full, holding 800 passengers each. All 800 of which got off at one station, causing this wonderful cascade of bodies to come flooding out, filling the streets like some sort of gelatinous liquid. Beautiful. And with that, more expansion. I built more neighborhoods, and more neighborhoods, and more and more thousands of people flocked to me. Tram lines, highways, thousands of spaces for new buildings. It was only a matter of time before the population skyrocketed yet again. Yeah, except it, uh, didn't. For whatever reason, people had decided enough was enough, and they didn't want to move in anymore. What's worse is, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why. Mousing over the citizen happiness meter revealed that citizens in my city were having a wonderful time. Lots of wealth, reliable city services, and no poo in the drinking water. Yet. This city was just good. So why then was no one moving in? Hmm. Mm. During this whole time of expanding the city, I had assumed that offices are just plain better than industrial areas. You see, offices can be placed anywhere, so I'd just been placing them wherever I pleased. Typically, right next to residential, so people wouldn't have to travel far for work. Unfortunately, there's a limit. At some point, people get sick of their keyboard slapping and need manufacturing jobs. So I gave them what they wanted, 
and holy shit, a nice influx of tens of thousands of people. I passed over 100,000, then over 150. People were literally dying to get to my city. And predictably, the traffic was really bad. I expanded so much that I'd filled up the barrier island. I expanded down to the mainland, filling it with a huge, expansive suburbia. I built over 100 elementary schools. The population grew still. I built these cool university buildings, the Large Hadron Collider, this needle-looking thing, and the population grew still. International airport, more suburbia, nuclear energy, more industry, trams, trains, more suburbia, highways, skyscrapers, incineration plants, more suburbia, infrastructure of all shapes and sizes. The city grew, and grew, and grew. And here we are, fellas. 300,000 citizens. I'm pretty confident this is the largest city ever built in City Skylines 2. Now, let me ask you a question. What are 300,000 people good at? Maybe making a lot of money, or using lots of incineration plants, or perhaps producing lots of digital goods. Yes, they are good at all of those things, but they're most good at one thing in particular. They are good at pooping. Gentlemen, I present to you the purpose of this city. What everything has been leading up to. I present the Pukano. In the ensuing Poonami, the entirety of M mm was destroyed. Only one single person remained. The Poo Man. If you'd like to beat my record and claim even more lives, pre-order this fantastic game with my link. Goodbye.